Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. A pleasant, beautiful day to you because this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Shall we pray? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, for this day we thank you. We thank you that you are the king who is coming again a second time to take with you those who are prepared to go with you. Father, we are on our journey as you know. We pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to speak to our hearts and we will listen to what the Holy Spirit says. And as we have come in our different spaces this day to worship you, may our hearts truly be in that place where true joys are to be found. And may we, Almighty God, offer to you worship from our heart, and may our mind and our entire being be part of this worship. And may you bless us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn is, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. morning prayer for the fourth Sunday of Advent begins on page number 75 in the Book of Common Prayer. Watch, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or midnight or at the cock crow or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. Let us confess our sins against God. And before we confess our sins against God, we will light the fourth candle of Advent.
On this the fourth Sunday of Advent, as we think about the coming of Jesus Christ, we light the candle of love. How great is the love of the Father has lavished on us. This is how God shows his love. He sent his one and only son into the world that he might, that we might live through him. A new commandment I give to you, love one another as I've loved you, so you must love one another All men will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Page number 79. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in life eternal. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now and will be forever. Amen. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. The Vanity on page number 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hand have mold, hands have molded dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker for he's our God, we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The psalm for today is Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4, 19 through 26. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him. My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him, and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name, and I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Glory.
glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Old Testament, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 1 to 11, and chapter 16. When the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell your servant David, thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Whenever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to the prince of my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will anoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evil doers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I anointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Move over the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, your house and your kingdom shall be shall be made sure forever. Before me, your throne shall be established forever. A word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First song of Isaiah, Canticle Nine, on page eighty-six. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the word of the Lord written in Romans 16, 25 to 27. Now to God who is able to strengthen you, according to my gospel as the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The, the hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
A reading from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 1, beginning at the 26th verse through to the 38th verse. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to Galilee, to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by the words and pondered what sort of greetings this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be? Since I am a virgin, the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Be to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we wait upon you for your word. We open our heart to you to receive your word. Holy Spirit, we pray for knowledge with understanding. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The God who works the impossibles. The God who works the impossibles. Today, my brothers and sisters, we have journeyed liturgically to the fourth Sunday of Advent. And we know Advent is a season when we are called to watch, to wait, to repent, and to be alert for the Son of God, the King of Kings, will return at a time when we do not know. It may be now, it may be tomorrow, it may be not in our existence, but he will come again. He's coming again, and that's a fact. That's nothing that we can do, no matter how much their, their cynics smear and laugh and jeer at it, at it. it's a fact. He's coming again. And he's coming again because he already came. And that is why he's coming the second time. Because he came on earth and pro procured our salvation. He brought back humanity into relationship with God by his death upon a cross. And by rising from the dead ascending into heaven, where he sits at God's right hand, interceding for us. And so, my brothers and sisters, this fourth Sunday, we lit the candle of love. And because of love, this is why Jesus Christ came and did what he did, brought our salvation. And so we bless the Lord, we honor God. And what a beautiful gift as we approach 
the season of Christmas. As you know, Advent has four Sundays. And so we began four Sundays before Christmas. And this week, we shall be celebrating the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ in the, in the, on the 25th, 24th, 25th, when our Savior came into the world as a babe. And so my brothers and sisters, there's so much pain and suffering and anxiety around us. There's so much confusion. There's so much evil. And amidst all of that, there's so much good. There are many good things happening. And we as Christians cannot afford to be bogged down and to be wrapped up in our fears and the cares of the world that we lose sight of this blessed hope and we lose sight of the love, that unconditional love that God has for us, that unconditional love that loves us in spite of who we are. The love of God does not depend on us, on our response. God is the first mover, and we are the ones who are called to make a decision to accept that love or to reject it. And so we find in the, in the, in the book of 2 Samuel that King David, and we heard King, King David's name going through the psalm and the gospel, that David, and we are told that David was a man after God's own heart. Not that God sinned, but we know that David sinned. But God says he's the one, a man after my own heart. And when we trace the genealogy of Jesus Christ, as proclaimed by the angel Gabriel, that the king is going to come from the lineage of David. So in 2 Samuel, we have David reflecting introspecting, David is saying, ah, oh, I have this spalacious home and I have all the things I have. We have the covenant of the Lord. Remember when the children of Israel were delivered from Egypt, the covenant of the Lord was placed in an ark, the ark of the covenant. And so they would carry it from place to place. And sometimes their enemies would capture the ark of the Lord. And so we find that now that David, had, who was called this, the little shepherd boy, as, as Nathan reminded him, as God told Nathan, the prophet, that I took you from the sheepfold and I gave you such, I, 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 I brought you thus far. I took you and I made you the king. And all these years of the Ark of the Covenant, I have been with you. But what David's contemplation was, how can I be comfortable in a dwelling place and the Ark of the Covenant of God resides in a tent where God's presence is? But God's, so he wanted to build a, a, a temple for God's, for the Ark of the Covenant. And so he had this in mind. But God says, no, you're not the one who's to build it. But what I'm going to do for you, I'm going to build your house. I'm going to make your name to be remembered. I, the Lord God, will make you be great. He says, and I will appoint a place for my people Israel. Because, you know, Israel, the people, the tri the, the people of Israel were going from place to place. They had, as we'd say, no abiding city because... They had to be fleeing most times from their enemies. And when they sinned against God, they were sent into exile. And so, my brothers and sisters, what David intended to do for God, God says, no, not you, not you. But I will appoint, but I am going to do for you. And I will appoint that place for my children, the children of Israel. And they will be disturbed no more. They will have to, do not have to wander from place to place. And they will get rest from their enemies. And he says, moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make the house. And he says, your house and your kingdom shall be made sure for, forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. So out of that proclamation, 
out of that saying of God through Nathan to David, we have the angel of God, Gabriel, appearing to Mary. This young girl, unmarried, engaged, this was a, she was a virgin, living in, in that town of Nazareth. She lived in a town in Galilee called Nazareth. And so we are told that Mary was there and maybe she was going to fetch water or something, but she had an encounter with the angel Gabriel. And in those days, persons were always scared if an angel of God appeared because if an angel appeared unto you, it means that you may not, it's trouble or you may not live to see another day. And if God, if there were ever a, a theophany, which is mean, a, 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 an encounter with God, people would say, this is it. So we, we know that Gabriel had been appearing to others. And we know that Gabriel also had appeared to Zechariah the priest when he was in the temple, in the, in, the, in the sanctuary of the inner sanctuary, and told him that his wife Elizabeth was going to be pregnant and bear a son who would become the forerunner of Jesus. And now Mary, this young virgin, was on her way. And the angel, of course, knowing that what is about to happen, that Mary was going to be afraid. He says, greetings, favored one. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. And she was perplexed and wondering, what is it? What have I done? What have I done? When we encounter God in a certain way, we wonder, oh my God, we have a dream or a vision. Am I going to die now? Who's going to go? And so he says, do not be afraid. And we're living in this time when all the prophecies and, and God is speaking to us through, through our prayers, through the hymns, sermons, through our experiences. And we become afraid because of the roughness of the waves of the sea of hatred and wickedness and poverty and illness and death that encompass us. He says, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. What is it to find favor with God? It means that God is pleased with what we're doing. And my question to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, can God say to us, I found favor with you? As we are journeying in this life, the things we by the things we say and do, or the things we do not say and the things that we do not do, can God say he has found favor with us? And so Gabriel went on to tell her what would happen, that she would conceive and, and bear the son, and his name would be called Jesus. And just to back up in Old Testament history, is that the children of Israel were anticipating a deliverer who would come to set them free from the oppression of their enemies. So they were looking for a Messiah. So Mary knew about that as a Jewish girl. She would know that there was an anticipation of the Messiah. But she was told she was the chosen one whom the Lord God had favored to bring the Son of God into the world. And this is where the, the proclamation, and later on at Christmas we will hear about the incarnation. But the thing is, Mary received it. She received it after she realized that it was from God, and God had already made a way that Joseph, her, her fiancé, her, who she was to be married to was not going she was not going to be through human interaction but it was by the holy spirit who would overshadow her and the baby jesus would be born and so when she found that out and heard about also that the god of the impossibility impossibilities that god had also allowed her, 
her cousin, Elizabeth, who was way up in age, maybe Elizabeth could have been in her 80s, and you know, after a certain years, biologically speaking, that women are not able to conceive. So with all of that happening, and she's been told this, Mary did not fuss after she found out God had already made a way. He was going to make the impossible possible. She said, here I am, the servant of the Lord, because the angel Gabriel had also said, for nothing will be impossible with God. And then she said, here I am, the servant of the Lord. How many of us, when we are called to do God's will, will say to God, here I am, your servant. You created me. You are my father. You are my savior. You are my healer. You are my provider. You are the one who died and rose from the dead for me that I may have life and have it more abundantly. How many of us will submit to God and say, here I am? How many of us will love God that much to trust God to make a way when there seemed to be no way? Brothers and sisters, it's easy to talk about exercising our faith, but when it comes to practice, it's hard, isn't it? It's hard, because we want to see the proof. All Mary needed to know was how. It hadn't happened yet, but she trusted in God that God would make a way. So the connection now, the lineage of David would continue, and it would be great. So David, who wanted to build the temple, the house for God, God said, I'll build a house and, and I will extend your name and your kingdom will last forever. And we know that Joseph was of the lineage of David. So we see all of this coming in to being that Jesus Christ is the Messiah promised because God and we may wonder, why did God allow him to become human? Why the incarnation? Why the mystery? And as Paul writing to the people of Rome, Paul says, now, my brothers and sisters, now to God who is able to strengthen us in our weakness, in our feebleness, when we submit to God, God is the one who gives us the strength to believe when we accept it and open our mind and our spirit to receive so now to God because there is nothing or no one who is above God or can overpower God God is the God who makes miracles work God is not a magician God is a miracle worker what is impossible with human beings is it is not impossible with God is always Possible. And that's what we have to believe. As Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 tells us, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mary was not yet pregnant, but she anticipated if God says so, so shall it be. And so you and I, my brothers and sisters, are called to exercise that faith to be able to humble ourselves before God and say, here I am, Lord God, your servant. So when God tells us, we have to take him at his word. We have to believe and trust so that we're able to show others in our speech and action how truly we do love God. Because we can say, I love you, Lord, but yet we do not do his will. And that love becomes a lip service, not something that comes from the heart. And to truly love, to love God, is to surrender. Is to say, you are the head. You are my being. And, and as we are reminded by scriptures, it is in Christ, in, it is in God we live and move and have our being. And the love that God has called us to is that perpetual love the unconditional love. There are so many people hurting, waiting to hear a word of encouragement, waiting to get some food, waiting to know that their mortgage or their rent is going to be paid next month, waiting to know that the virus 
the COVID-19 is not going to overshadow them. Waiting to know that people who are haters and dividers will not always be. They want to know that there is a God who loves them. There are persons out there who are thirsty. And you and I have been given a mission. John was a forerunner who came before Jesus to, to call the people to repentance. And so he, re he called them and they listened and they came and they were baptized to a baptism of repentance. You and I who have been baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and be called to live a life of holiness, a life in love to God. So that when we say to God, not only by our words, but by our actions, we love you, God will say, you are favored by me. And whatever the things, thing or things that are challenging us today, challenging our faith, that's telling us that we can't, that God is asleep or God does not care for you. It's a lie from the enemy. Because with God, all things are possible. God can take what does not exist and call it into existence, as we read in Romans chapter 3. That it is a God who calls things that does not exist. So, and, we, and, and if we stop, you know, brothers and sisters in Christ, and we reflect on our own journey. We see many times all the things that we think that were not possible, how God has brought us through or moved the mountains or the mountain or, and, or taken us over the mountain or under the mountain or through the mountain. And we come out and we say, wow, God, it had to be you. And yet, when something, another challenge comes, we are quick to lose hope and faith but because of God's love my brothers and sisters God is so compassionate and God wants all of us because of his love because we are anticipating his second coming because he loves us so much and he wants every single person to be saved he's compassionate so let us as we prepare to celebrate his coming into the world and as we prepare ourselves to receive him, because as I said, it may not be in our lifetime, but we do know he's coming again. He's coming again the second time. And when he comes this time, he's not coming to ask us how many times we were at worship. I think he's not going to come and ask us which day we worshiped on. He's coming to, and he's going to ask us, have you done my will? Have you loved one another as I've called you to love? Have you believed in my word? Have you shared what you have that I've given you with others? Have you prepared yourself? Because his second coming, the judgment is going to be about accountability. We have to give an accountability, an account to God as to what we, we have done with the gift and our gifts stroke talents that he has given to us. We have to give him, a, him an account. And that based on how we live in this life, then if we lived for him, and if we trusted in the God who can make all things new, if we trusted in the God of the impossibilities, who with this God who says, his ear is not deaf, nor his hands too short, and if we did not resort to, you know, some people, if their horoscope doesn't say to them, buy that or go there, they're not doing it. Because they listen to the spiritual, the spirit of divination. And they trust in that. But when the voice of God comes through the different mediums of the scriptures, prayers, the Holy Spirit speaking to the heart, or through the written, spoken word, through the sacrament of Holy Communion, we doubt. But let us on this day make a deliberate effort asking the Holy Spirit to break us, melt us, mold us, and fill us so that we can trust in the God who with him all things are possible. And just like Mary, the mother of God, 
Mary, this young virgin who said, be it unto me according to thy word. Here I am. May we this day say to God, here I am. For a deeper relationship. Not just a superficial kind of relationship. A deep-rooted relationship that comes from the heart. So then, my brothers and sisters, God loves and God continues to love, love, to love us. So may we, as we make our worship this day, as we go through each day, may we love him as he has called us to love. Amen. Love, wonderful, wonderful love, the love of God to me. Love, wonderful, wonderful love, so rich, so full, so free. Oh, wide, wide as the ocean, deep, deep as the sea. High, high as the heavens above is his love to me. And we all sing it, right? Amen. God's love is pure. Let us now affirm our faith in God as we say the words of the Apostles' Creed written on page 96 in the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrage A. O Lord. Show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. And give thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And guide us in the way of justice. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. The Collect for today. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all God, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Collect for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of your glorious resurrection of your Son, O oh Lord. Give us this day such blessings through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor.
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A collect for grace. Lord God and, and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Father, we thank you for the gift of your pure love, the love that is so serene. Father, we ask of you this day to help us. Help us, Almighty God, as we journey in this life, not to be downcast with the cares of this world, but to look upward to the light of lights, to look upward to the King of Kings, who is very present in our situations. Father, we ask of you this day that we may hear you and see you, see you in the people around us, see you in the whiteness of the snow, see you in the breeze that blows across our face, see you, Almighty God, in the people around us, that we may not be limited, Almighty God, in our, in our, in our seeing of you. We know that, Almighty God, you are a spirit. And so, Father God, we pray this day that we will come closer to you, trusting in you, letting go of fear and holding on to faith. Be, although we are people of sight, help us, Almighty God, to walk by faith and not by sight. And we thank you for all the blessings of this day. We thank you for the blessings of the past week. We thank you for your faithfulness, your graciousness. We thank you for the healing miracles in reconciliation between families who have been estranged, your healing miracles in the minds and bodies of those who are ill. Remember before you, Marion Bryant, Kyle Douglas, Christopher Green, Viola Green, Alison Hodge, Bernard Hughes, William Jackson, Maggie Jones, Gloria Seeley, Michael Simon, Philip Simpson, Vilma Simpson, Bernadine Steele, Carl Walters, Thomas Wernham, Irene Williams, Kevin Wind, and all the other names that were not called this morning, but you know where every single person are this day. And so we give you thanks for miracles that have happened and is happening now and will continue to happen. We thank you for the miracles that will allow us to reach out and touch someone else's life, to let them know that God loves and God cares. Father, bless us as a people. Father God, we pray that we may be unified, especially your church. Almighty God, as you have prayed in that heavenly prayer, high priestly prayer, that we all may be one as you and the Father are one. We are split in denominations, yet we believe in the same God. So we pray for that unity. Lord, bless the earth, bless the air we breathe. Bless those, the poor and the outcasts and the marginalized, and those who work to liberate the lives of others. We ask you to bless the medical teams, bless the families that are going through the time of waiting and to see what's happening to their families who they're not able to be at their bedsides. Bless our children and young people all around the world. And Father God, give them hope, give them strength, and get, let them know, for those who do not know, that there is a God who created them in love and loves them. Bless their parents, bless those in governance, and Lord, we say thanks again. Thank you, Lord, and may our souls be ready that when you come, when you come to call us home, we can hear the words, come, thou blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Amen. And amen. God is good, brothers and sisters, and he's good all the time. Isn't that so? We have so many testimonies that if we stop to, to thank God, you know, as the songwriter says, count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Isn't that true? Yes, when I do that, when I think that I'm lacking here and there, and when I see what God has done and is doing, and when I see people, you know, I, I got a video the other day of some children in an African country. These are children from poor backgrounds, but they were singing a, a Christmas song, and 
and they were dancing and very excited. Now, when you look at them, you know that they didn't have all the niceties that, you know, others have. But the joy, and they sang about God, and they're saying they're going to worship him, and they're wishing people a Merry Christmas. And I said, Lord, isn't this awesome? Because sometimes the more we have is the more we grumble. The less some people have is the more they praise. So let us find time to thank God. And I pray that you have been taking care of yourselves, getting rest, reading the Bible, drawing closer to God, encouraging one another, smiling in the midst of the storm, knowing that the God you serve is the God who can make all things possible. Now our service continues and we're hoping the next Sunday to be on Zoom and live stream also. And this afternoon, there is the nativity of our Lord Jesus, the, the Christmas narrated story, along with scripture readings, musical selections, and carols. And it's this afternoon at 3 p.m. The email will be sent to you um, shortly. It will be on Sunday, December 20th. And the holy naming of Jesus, sorry, the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ is on Thursday, December 24th, which we call um, Christmas Eve. So that service is going to be at 6 p.m. on Zoom. The holy naming, which is on New Year's Eve, December 31st, is going to be at 6 p.m. too, also on Zoom. And these links will be sent to you through emails. Thanks for everyone who, by your prayers, offering tithes, who have been giving to the work of the church to God's, in God's vineyard. We give God thanks for you. And um, as you know, the different means in which you can give your offering or tithe. So the snow that came last week was beautiful. And we give God thanks, you know, he's such an awesome God, a God of variety. And now as we continue the journey, let us prepare our hearts for Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. And also Bible study will be on Wednesday at 7 p.m. and it's reflections on Christmas. So get your cake and your, and your wine or your sorrel and we're just going to sit and sing and talk at 7 p.m. on Zoom. So keep those dates in mind. Sunday at 3 p.m. and then Wednesday Bible study and then Christmas Eve at 6 p.m. New Year's Eve at 6 p.m. and the links will be sent. So take care and God bless and share God's goodness and God's hope with someone else. And as Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. And the hymn, the last hymn for today is lo he comes
Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Bless the Lord.